Hi, this is Sami and I'm his human. Welcome to our channel. In this video, I'm going to tell you about our first time we flew with Sami and how we were almost not allowed on the plane. Our first time flying with Sami was two and a half years ago. He was still a puppy. He was about seven or eight months old. So we were flying to Greece, uh, to the island of Crete. We were going there for vacation because we really love Greece. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you how our experience was and what went wrong. And hopefully you're gonna be able to, to learn something from it. And if you're planning to fly somewhere with your Westie, hopefully you're gonna be more prepared uh, than I was. As you can imagine, it was my first time flying with a dog. I was pretty nervous, pretty, you know, I wanted to get everything right. I did my research. I made sure that I got all of Sami's paperwork, which is actually just the passport that I needed to get from the vet and make sure that all the shots were there up to date. I had his health book with me. I checked the airline website to make sure that his weight was okay because each airline has a maximum weight that they allow. And the next step was choosing a carrier that would be accepted by the airline. So I went on their website, I checked the dimensions and they give you some specific dimensions that the, the carrier must have because throughout the, the flight, the dog needs to be inside the carrier and it needs to be underneath the seat in front of you. So obviously the bag has to fit uh, under the chair and I spent hours looking on Amazon and trying to find a bag that would be uh, within the size, you know, but also that Sami would be able to fit in. I did a lot of measuring and a lot of research and I finally found the perfect bag. So I bought it. Um, it was just high enough for Sami to fit in there really well. But at the same time, it was uh, within the maximum height that they state on their website, which is about uh, 23 centimeters. So just so you can get an idea, it's something like this. So it's really small. But anyway, so I wanted to make sure that everything was perfect, that I respected all the rules. So we got his ticket, uh, the flight day came, we checked Sami in, they put the, you know, you're supposed to put him in the carrier bag when you do the check-in, just so they can see that he fits in well and everything is fine. They weighed him, he was well under the, the maximum of eight kilos. So they, they let us through all good. Uh, we had a four hour flight to Athens and then uh, we had a transfer flight. So we had a layover of another four hours there and a transfer flight of another hour to get to Crete. So we finally got to our destination. We were happy, everything was amazing. Uh, you know, we were happy that we were able to fly with our dog. So fast forward two weeks later, it's time for us to return home. We do the check-in, we go through, everything is perfect. We go through the first flight, you know, four hour long flight. Then we have our layover, another four hours of waiting. And then it's time for our final flight to be able to go home. So we're at the boarding gate. We have Sami in his uh, carrier and we are about to board the plane. And the flight attendant who was there uh, takes one look at Sami and says, I'm sorry, the dog can't go on the plane. Um, at which point we're like, what? You know, what? And she says, um, I'm sorry, the dog is too tall for the bag. He cannot stand comfortably inside the bag with the bag closed. 
And the airline rules state that the dog must be able to sit, stand and turn around comfortably inside the bag with the bag closed. Um, so yeah, truth is that he, he could stand, you know, but his head would be bent down a little bit kind of like that um, because the bag is too, too small, you know. But again, uh, during the flight, uh, and I tried to explain this to her because the bag had a zipper on top, which opened and his head was out. Also, it had the laterals that open and it expands by another like 20 centimeters on each side. And I, I show this to her. I start to unzip the bag and I try to explain to her that, look, during the flight, the bag's going to be completely expanded. He's going to stay at my feet. And don't worry, you know, if that's what you're worried about, our dog's going gonna, gonna to be perfectly comfortable. And she's like, no, I'm sorry. You can't go on the plane with the dog. You need to put him in the cargo section. So at this point, we're, we're like, look, we've been on three flights before this one. This is our fourth flight. So no one uh, said anything about this before. You know, your colleagues let us through. We, we had no problems until now. You know, we've been on two uh, four-hour flights before this and everything was completely fine. So please just let us go on the plane because this is our flight home. We're not going to put our dog in cargo. This is not in, you know, no way. It's no way this is happening. And you could tell that she was already, you know, short on patience, not willing to discuss this anymore. And she was like, yeah, no, I'm sorry. You either put your dog uh, in cargo or you cannot board the plane. Uh, at which point, you know, so putting Sami in cargo was not an option at any point. So at this point, my partner, uh, who knew that our luggage was already on the plane, because we, we had a transfer flight before that. And when you have a transfer flight, your bags are automatically transferred on the plane. So at this point, if we refuse to board the flight, they would have to basically delay the flight and get all the luggage out, look for our bags and get them to us. So at this point, my partner looks at her and says, okay, then in this case, I'm sorry, we're not gonna be boarding the plane. Uh, please get our bags. And that was actually our luck because she, you know, she realized that it was going to be a bigger headache than she wanted. And it was all based on a technicality, really, because our dog was perfectly fine to board the plane. So, yeah, at this point, she's like, OK, um, fine, you can board the plane. You can go. Yeah, and that's how it went. We were this close of not being able to board with Sami. And we were really lucky, you know, because uh, if it wasn't for the transfer flight and our luggage already on the plane, uh, there was nothing that we could have done. So luckily everything went fine and we boarded the plane and we got home. And I'm hoping that in sharing this story with you, um, hopefully you'll be more prepared than we were and uh, at least know what to expect, know what to be careful about. What I've learned from this experience was uh, actually a few things I learned. And one is that when it comes to flying with a dog, uh, especially a Westie, because Westies are, are not considered very small dogs. If your dog's weight or size is in any way close to the limit that they accept on the plane, then it's all in the hands of this one person who's gonna check you in and who's gonna board you on the plane. At some point, you know, it's pretty much based on luck because, you know, again, Sami was well under the, the maximum weight and his carrier was perfectly within the rules. Uh, but still, even so, he almost didn't make it on the plane based on just this one person's opinion. The second thing that I learned was that the dog's haircut is super important uh, because at that point, Sami's coat was out of control. Uh, he actually seemed twice bigger than he really was. And that's because I was going through a phase. I was hating the traditional Westie cut and I really wanted him, wanted him to be a teddy bear all fluffy and big. Now looking back on it, I realized that uh, if you plan to fly with your Westie in the cabin and you need him to fit in the bag, it's a really bad idea to, to keep, let his uh, hair all wild like that. 
And I think that that contributed a little bit to, to what happened. So yeah, that's the second lesson. Uh, get your Westia haircut right before the flight if you plan to fly with them in the cabin. The third thing that I learned since then was while looking in the airport um, at other people traveling with their dogs, I noticed that their carriers were bigger than mine. And then I noticed that nobody's actually measuring the bags. So that was another thing that I realized that maybe going a little bit over the maximum size that they that they state on the website, maybe it's not such a bad idea after all, you know? As long as the bag is obviously not a lot bigger, and as long as it uh, still fits under the seat in front of you, it shouldn't be a problem. Probably at that point, had I gotten a slightly taller bag, nobody would have minded and everything would have been fine. Yeah, so... Uh, these are the things that I learned from this experience. Um, next time I'm going to fly with Sami, which is actually going to be two days from now. Um, I'm definitely doing some things differently and I'm going to make um, a new video about that and tell you all about how it goes. Uh, fingers crossed. So I hope that you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. Um, tell me, uh, how was your experience? Did you ever fly with your Westie? Uh, leave me a comment and tell me how that went. Did you have any kind of incidents? And if you've never flown with your Westie, are you planning to? Uh, would you like to know anything else? Please, you know, leave me questions and comments and I'd be happy to make a future video about whatever it is you're interested to know. Thank you and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!